y'all, it's Maisie Provides and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now if you've been following activist versus agriculture for any given amount of time, e even a week, then you know that there's one thing that I am borderline obsessed with and that is the fact that there are some people out there who genuinely believe that agriculture is destroying the planet. You know, the industry that keeps over 7 billion people fed. There's a group of people out there who truly believe and preach that it's actually destroying the earth and it's simply not. Over the past four weeks, I've gone vegan for the season of Lent. Now I've got two weeks left, I can see the finish line and I am highly anticipating crossing that finish line and eating a giant steak, but for now I'm still going to continue to talk about veganism in a series I like to call The Vegan Diaries. So over the course of the past four weeks, I have looked into four different focus areas. The first being my energy level on a vegan diet. The second being the cost difference between my normal carnivorous diet versus a vegan diet. The third being the way that a vegan diet changed me physically, such as, you know, how much weight have I lost, what it's done to my hair, my face, things like that. And the fourth being today, this week, the daddy of them all, my carbon footprint on the vegan diet. And spoiler alert, didn't really change that much, if at all. Now before Lent started, you know, before I willingly gave up meat and dairy and eggs for six weeks, I decided that I needed to calculate my carbon footprint just for a little bit of a comparison. So I hopped onto the Environmental Protection Agency's website, epa.gov, and proceeded to calculate my carbon footprint. I was surprisingly not surprised to see that the EPA did not factor your diet into your carbon footprint calculation because guess what? It doesn't really matter that much. And you know, the tiny bit that it might matter, I think it's probably worth it for, you know, 7 billion people to be fed with a nutritional, sustainable, and cost-effective diet. So I went to my vegan and anti-activist Facebook groups. I asked the members of the groups, what websites would you recommend that calculate your carbon footprint and take your diet into account because the EPA does not? I got a couple of recommendations from that and I wound up with five different websites, which means five different carbon footprint calculators to use. Now the next thing I'm about to say is something that you need to keep in mind throughout the rest of this video and something that is quite possibly the most important thing that I have uncovered on this whole entire vegan experience that I've been on. And that is the fact that math does not lie. I am not good at math. I'm a journalist. I'm good at writing and I'm good at talking to people. But if there is one thing that Miss Loran Dennison taught me in all of my math classes, it's that if you've got one side of the equation that stays the same, the other side is going to stay the same too. 2 plus 4 is always going to equal 6. 20 plus 20 is always going to equal 40. Hudson, what does 1 plus 1 equal? 2. Good job. When I went to these different carbon footprint calculators that the vegan suggested, I was asked a series of questions for five different carbon footprint calculators. Those questions ranged from how much energy do you use in your home per year? How many miles per week do you commute per work? Do you have a dog? How many domestic flights have you taken? How many international flights have you taken? Do you recycle? And tell me about your diet. Are you vegan or are you not? When I first went through and answered these questions before this whole entire experiment started, I put that I was a meat eater. And over the weekend, I did those questions again with none of the variables changing except for the fact that I was a vegan. And the results were, well, they made me pretty happy. Now why did my results make me happy, you ask? One word, inconsistency. The results gave me a wide range. It went from a 1% difference to a 12% difference. The only carbon footprint calculator that I think could possibly be trusted is coolclimate.berkeley.edu, which is backed by a university. However, it's hard for me to even trust any of these carbon footprint calculators because the EPA, an unbiased government funded organization which was put in place to protect the environment, doesn't take diet into account 
when calculating carbon footprint. And don't you think that if a government funded organization could sit back and put the blame on a specific group of people for climate change, they would? Think about presidential debates. Climate change is a widely discussed topic. But if one of those candidates could sit back, point at the farmers and ranchers and say, hey, don't come to me complaining about climate change. Why don't you go talk to them? They would. I have my handy dandy notebook here and we are going to go over all of these different websites that I was recommended and how they calculated my carbon footprint. The Mossy Earth gave me a 2.05% difference, which is pretty small. I'll take it, even if it's not true. Nature gave me a 12% difference. 12, that is double digits. Not good if it were true. Conservation.org gave me a 9% difference. Not quite the double digits yet, but it is on up there. Footprint Calculator actually gave me a 1% difference, which I was pretty happy about. And if that one is true, I think I'd be okay with that. And coolclimate.berkeley.edu gave me a 4% difference. Like I said, if I'm going to pick any one of these carbon footprint calculators to be the most accurate, it's definitely the one from Berkeley. I'm going to trust a website that ends in edu over any of these others. Um, so 4% difference still is actually proving my hypothesis that it would be a less than 5% difference in my carbon footprint calculation for vegan versus carnivorous diet. I would be remiss if I made a video and did not bring up the coronavirus pandemic in this day and age, which coincidentally the coronavirus is actually doing the climate some good because there are countless people who are quarantined right now, meaning they're not going to work, they're not going to school, they're not going to visit any friends, they're not taking domestic flights, they're definitely not taking any international flights. Flights are being canceled, so the transportation industry is taking a huge hit from this, which is good for the environment. The EPA reports that nearly one third of greenhouse gases emitted from the United States is accounted to transportation. And if nobody's going anywhere, that number is going to go way down. To wrap up this video, I'm just going to hit some key points that I think you should take away. The first being that when calculating your carbon footprint, you should only trust an unbiased government funded organization. The second being that when calculating your carbon footprint, you should not trust organizations which have an agenda to push because they're going to say whatever makes them sound better and whatever they're fighting against sound worse. The third being that one plus one is always going to equal two. The fourth being that, yeah, agriculture does emit carbon. The EPA reports that in the U.S. alone, agriculture contributes to 9% of greenhouse gases. But you know, that 9%, it's feeding millions, if not billions of people. It's keeping us all fed. It's keeping us all happy. And I think that 9% is a pretty good trade-off for the amount of people that it's feeding. And the final point that I want to make, that I'm always going to want to make, is that agriculture is not destroying the planet. Agriculture is feeding it.